Fair trade is a concept that has been around for more than six decades, but has gained a significant amount of attention within just the last few years. Whether we have seen fair trade tagged on social media, heard it mentioned in lectures, or simply seen the FTO label stamped on bags of coffee at Starbucks, it is becoming clear that the discourse surrounding fair trade is growing and that the movement is gaining some traction. However, many of us are still unsure of what fair trade actually entails, and even those who have spent a lot of time studying it still find themselves questioning the potential of fair trade models. The most important questions seem to be, can we really affect positive social change through market-based solutions? And what does it truly mean to be fair trade? To gain a deeper understanding of the process and possibilities of fair trade production, we traveled to Guatemala to visit several artisan groups who are currently involved in fair trade business partnerships. Through meeting with these cooperatives, observing their work, and listening to their personal stories, we were able to explore many of the complex possibilities, benefits, and struggles of fair trade further allowing us to see its impact on local communities and provoking us to ask better questions about what fair trade must do in order to truly affect positive change. I went into this trip with a strong desire to deepen my understanding of the impact fair trade has on women. The Fair Trade Labeling Organization International's website identifies the empowerment of women as one of the 10 key impact areas explaining that important investments can be made in women's income generating activities that are not related to the farm, thereby strengthening their income, business experience, and position in the family. In fact, much of the research I had found on the impact of fair trade on women's livelihoods aligned with this statement, and there were a few recurring themes from my readings that I hoped I would see while in Guatemala, which included improved nutrition and health care, education for children, respect from family and community members, shifting traditional gender roles, boosted self-confidence, workplace solidarity, and social and economic mobility. And in many of the cases, that's what I saw. The majority of the women we met with involved in fair trade artisan groups reported that these models were allowing them to provide food for their children and better health care. Most women also said that these markets allowed them to send their children to school, and many were even progressing to higher education. And several women even told us that the ability to succeed in their own work and contribute income garnered them more respect from their husbands and families and strengthened their positions within the community as a whole. Despite obstacles and evident shortcomings, I still believe fair trade has a very real potential to change the lives of some of the world's most vulnerable people. And when done correctly, can actually keep cultural traditions alive. This is what I saw in Guatemala. The preservation and vitality of traditional clothing is due to these women. In their weavings, they are able to recreate part of the Mayan worldview and a dynamic manifestation of their identity. While we know that market-based solutions are not the key to changing the world, they are definitely a powerful source of transformation. Furthermore, markets that value ancestral cultures and bring new people into value chains actually do have the power to transform social structure. And when these markets are invested in women specifically, families are transformed and empowered as a whole, paving the way to a more promising future for generations to come. So I guess the question now is, why not fair trade?